In this video, I'll show you how to use the Magewell Director Mini as a PTZ controller for one or more OBSBOT tail air cameras. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. I first want to thank OBSBOT for sending the tail air cameras for me to share with you on this channel. I would also like to thank Magewell for sending this Director Mini out on loan. But this is not a sponsored video, and actually neither company knows I'm even making this video. So let's just get right into it. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure your OBSBOT tail air cameras are on your network. You can connect them over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. I would recommend, if you can, get the wired Ethernet adapter that OBSBOT sells and actually plug these in to give your cameras a wired network connection. It'll give you a more stable network connection, and this can actually also power the camera if your Ethernet is power over Ethernet. Once you plug in the camera to so the Ethernet, it'll get an IP address on your network. Now, this step, as always, is the most complicated part of any of this kind of stuff, finding the IP address of these devices on your network. Unfortunately, I can't give you a step-by-step -step tutorial because this will depend on what router you have. My router is a Unify router, so I can actually go log into the web interface here, search for OBSBOT, and find it in the list of devices. So I've got two cameras connected over Wi-Fi and two that are wired. I've also already set up static IP addresses for these, so I know that I will always be able to find this camera with this IP address on the network. I would also recommend setting static IP addresses in your router if you can, just so that your IP addresses don't change every time you reboot the devices. Once you've got your cameras connected to your network, I would recommend downloading the desktop app that OBSBOT has. This is called the OBSBOT Center. And this way you can actually just double check that your network connection is actually working. So here I've got the app connected and it's able to find the three cameras on the network. And this one has the wired connection, so I know it's able to find it using the wired IP address. Once you've gotten this far, you're ready to now go into the Magewell Director Mini to start setting up the PTZ control. I'm gonna go ahead and just take an HDMI cable from the OBSBOT tail air. I'm gonna plug that into one of the HDMI ports on the Director Mini. It take a second and then we should see the signal pop up here. So now I can cut between the main camera and the OBSBOT camera. So the next step is to hook up with the Magewell to actually control the PTZ function of the OBSBOT. So here I'm in the Magewell and I've selected HDMI 2. So now I'm gonna go ahead and edit this scene, long press on the HDMI 2, press edit. And if I scroll over to the right here, there is a function here called PTZ control. If you tap that, it'll bring up a little menu here where we can set which IP address of the camera we're gonna control from this camera angle. So I'm gonna first turn this on, and now I can type in the IP address of the OBSBOT. The port that the OBSBOT cameras use is 52381, so make sure you enter that here. Visca UDP mes message header, make sure that is enabled. That needs to be turned on, otherwise this won't work at all. You can leave the rest of them, click save. Now we're ready to actually test this out. So, tap on the three dots, and this will let you customize which actions appear in this, this row. You can just tap on any of these to load them, but I'm actually gonna go and hit custom here, and I'm gonna add PTZ to the menu. That way it's available now directly here without going into the three dots. So once I do this, that pulls up the little PTZ control, and this should now just work. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll to the right, and there we go. One other note is that you actually need to turn off the auto tracking on the OBSBOT before this will work. So if you hold up your hand like this, the camera will blink a couple times and now face tracking is on and it's following me. And when it's following me, it's actually going to not really work well with PTZ. It kind of just wants to go back to find my face in the center no matter what I push. So I'm gonna hold up my hand again, wait for the light to blink three times. And now I'm looking at it and it's solid green and that means face tracking is off. So now when I go like this, it'll actually go and change positions. So right now this lets you pan and tilt the camera, and then you can actually zoom in and out as well. This is digital zoom, keep that in mind, but this will control the zoom of the camera. You can also turn on and off autofocus. You can also set presets. So if I wanna go and save this as a scene, I can press store and then press one. Then I can go over here and zoom in on, on this press store two, then I can just tap one and it'll restore and move the camera back to this scene. So you get nine presets you can save and you can recall them from the screen here. So what does this look like to use in practice? Well, I'm gonna go over here, cut to my main camera. Notice that the little PTZ icon is gone because there's no PTZ control enabled on this scene. Once I tap HDMI two, the PTZ icon appears because this scene has a PTZ camera in it. Then I can tap on that to actually go and control the camera. This also works if you have a scene with multiple cameras. So if I go in here, add a new scene, and let's pull up this camera here and add a second source for, say, picture-in-picture. Picture. It's not a very good scene. 
it's fine for the demo. Then you can tap in the PTZ control again and choose which camera this scene controls. Now, obviously only one of these is a PTZ camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the IP address again. And then I'll save that. And now when I go and tap on this one with picture in picture and open up the PTZ control, I can change the position of the PTZ camera within this scene. This would probably be more useful as an overhead shot. Let's say, for example, I wanted to actually make this one be the full screen. So I'll go full screen here, move it down, and then make this one smaller. And let's crop in on this so I can make this one a little picture in picture, shrink it down, save that. And then this actually would make more sense as a top down camera. So I can actually go and use this to show, oh, that's the camera itself. So I can show what I'm doing on the table here. Maybe zoom in a little bit. And now we've got this nice picture in picture that I can move around this overhead shot, but keep my face in frame from the main camera. One other fun thing you can do is actually do this all from the web as well. So if you pull down on this menu here, you'll find the IP address of your Magewell, either wired or Wi-Fi. And if you type that into your browser, you can load up the control surface of Magewell's web interface. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that into my computer here. And now I've loaded up the Magewell Director Mini web interface. And this actually lets me do a whole bunch of things with the Magewell from my computer. This is a much easier way to configure the live streaming so you can copy and paste stream keys from your computer. But you also have this whole produce section. And this is a little web-based switcher. So I can, again, switch what the Director Mini is showing on screen between any of the scenes that I've configured. So here's my main camera, here is the Obspot Tail Air, and this is the picture in picture. And notice this little icon down here is a PTZ control. So once this one's selected, I can open up PTZ control and it looks just like it does on the Magewell Director Mini itself. So I can go ahead and scroll this around and move the camera around from the web. Let's now take a look at how to do this with multiple Obspot cameras. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my main wired camera for a second Obspot. Plug that one in over HDMI. Now you can see it's over here looking at me from the back. So now that the second Obspot is connected into this HDMI one, I can just go edit this scene and enable PTZ control for this scene. I'm gonna use the IP address of this one. Okay, there we go, 52381. I will enable the Visca UDP message header, save that, save that. And now when I go switch over to scene one, I now get the PTZ button as well. So now I can go ahead and move this camera around. This does mean that the PTZ control will only be able to control one of the two cameras, which makes sense. So in this picture in picture, because this scene is set up to control the overhead camera, this PTZ controller will now move only that camera, not the camera one. But that's all it takes to get the PTZ control enabled from the Majorwell Director Mini. The Director Mini can obviously send PTZ commands to any camera. I just wanted to show it working with the Obspot cameras for this because I think they're a really great option. Links to everything I use in this video are down below. And thanks again to Obspot for sending the tail air out for me to share with you on the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.